Hey campers, Georgia, chilly man cave today. Temperatures are dropping in Minnesota. Don't know what's going on. Winter can't be here already. But uh, in the last week, it's been in the low 50s and uh, high 40s. So rainy, windy, nah, not good. Not ready for this right now. What I wanted to talk to you about today is this guy. And as you know, I've been on a tear looking for a gas stove, a little camping stove that I can bake on. I use my French press for that. I've, I've always used it in the fire, but winter's coming and it's probably going to be a little bit of an issue getting a fire going out there in the snow and everything when it gets up to a couple of feet. I've been trying to find a stove that I can use and maybe modify and bake on it without putting it in a big container carrying some big container around just modifying the stove making a, a small addition to it somehow just so that i can have my little homemade baking system sit on the stove it's turning out to be quite a challenge but i found this guy and that's the bulin ultralight windproof camping stove is what they call it and it's a little different that's why it got my attention i'm hoping that when i open this up and actually check it out that i'm going to be able to control the heat as much as possible and as smoothly as possible to try and get that baking temperature i'm looking for here's hoping let me show you the stove and then hopefully we'll get outside and just give it a little bit of a test run to see how well it works it's kind of, like I said, it's kind of windy and, and icky out there, but hey, they did say windproof. So let's check it out. The Bulin Ultralight Camping Stove. And the model number, if you look up here, it says the BL100B6-A. It is unusual that you'll see what I'm talking about. This is not the first Bulin product I've looked at. They have another one, this one here, the BL300F2 Gas Lantern. It's a mini lantern, and I'll put a link at the end of the video so you can have a look at it. Another one that's a little unusual, but let's have a look at this BL100B6-A lightweight camping stove. But it comes in their normal, regular packaging. You can always tell their packaging. I have blue tape around this one, but it's that orange and black. Bulin. Inside, and this is something new, this didn't come with the original one, the lantern that I had, is now a lot of their products come with a little bag, which I thought was a nice touch. It does have the Bulin label on it somewhere. Instructions. In English, safety, one thing they do say, never, never, never use it indoors, which is common sense, you would think. And they have a bunch of safety recommendations that they say about it how to operate the stove. It is an unusual stove, but the way you use it and you turn it on and control it is kind of standard. And they, they didn't really change a lot of that. A one year limit warranty and it's for de obviously manufacturing defects. The Bulin 100 B6A came in the blue little bag here, the label on it. We get it out and you can see it fits in my hand. It's not tiny, but it's not big. Uh, it actually is a little heavier than I expected. 298 grams. What's that? 10.8 uh, ounces. The dimensions, two and a half by three and a half inches, which is closed. A little bit heavier. Lightweight? Uh, I don't think so. A lot of people who are into lightweight camping are not going to like it's a little head. And it is one of those stoves that doesn't connect directly to your gas can uh, canister right underneath here. It has the outside so it stands alone on the ground and then you have your connection here. Here you can see the connection and then your gas control here. They actually even label for you. What got my attention? Three separate burners. Interesting design. That's why it can give out so much power. They they say it's a 5800 watt, which converted, and I did a conversion, is about uh, 19,000 BTU per hour. A lot. This idea here really caught my attention. They just fold out, and you can see there, folds out like that, and it would sit on the ground, just like that and you'd have your canister. It does not have a piezo ignition, which makes sense because you've got three separate burners. And you can see here, it's a lot bigger than three and a half inches. So th those numbers they gave you would be the folded up carry around. So you can see it's all stainless steel, it looks very pretty. And you can see 
unusual. Let's go do some dirt time on it. I know, make a cup of coffee, which reminds me. As you know, life without coffee is no life at all. So here we are in the South 40. And I, unfortunately, when I finished filming there, a friend of mine came in and uh, was in to upgrade my computer. I've been having some problems on the editing and stuff like that, and I needed to have my computer upgraded. Anyway, he's done there, and it is the next day, and it's still overcast and miserable. But we're out here in the South 40. I did bring with me one of my backpacks. I just put a bunch of things in there that I want to use to test the new stove. One of the concerns I have, the width of the center opening when it's all spread out. It's going to limit the size of the pots and pans that I, I can put on there. With that in mind, I brought a couple of different ones with me, hence my pack is a little full. So let's get set up, open it up, set it all up and fire it up, see how it works. Well, as you saw there, getting it set up is not a big deal. It's fairly straightforward. The control on the heat seems very smooth. It allows you to drop down really low, get up high, drop down, switches off fine. There's no leaks or anything like that. Now the real test comes is what can I put on there to cook with? One thing I did do is just change my setup. I didn't like the tank being that close to the stove. So I moved it away. I just have it sitting on my pack here and I can see the control. My concern is this area here, right underneath the burners. 
it has a really big outer surface but it's this inner gap here that really concerns me about what size pots you can put on there. I've got a couple of different pots that I'm going to put on there and let's see how they fit. So yeah, I have the big Stanley pot. I do have it weighted down. It has everything in it, the whole kit that it comes with if you look inside there. And you can see there, there's plenty of room for the pot. This pot shows my Volt can. And I believe it's a 750 liter or is it a 500? Or maybe it's a 500. And you can see it's from Voltcan. It's titanium, very light. And this is the pot that I normally carry with me when I'm doing a walkabout. This is what I cook in. As you can see, it's a lot smaller diameter. And there's the problem right there. See that? It is just that much too small. That's a problem. The next pot I wanted to look at was the Stanley Adventure Cook pot. And it's extremely popular. A lot of people use this. I don't think it's going to fit. Yeah, it don't fit. It actually slides right in between the stand-ups. And here's the Stanley frying pan. Once again, we have that really wide base on it. So there, I can see no problem there. Fits perfect. I'm not sure about these really being helpful. What I'm talking about is the serrations on here. But they, they do help a bit. This is the one pot that is the main reason I bought this stove. And this is the uh, Stanley French press, the original one, basic French press, that I took the inside out and modified it. I'll put some links down below in the description for you to go and have a look at the videos on how I did this stuff. It is my baking system. And you can see here I have my setup for baking. How do I put this on here? Of all the stoves I've looked at, this one has probably the best chance of being able to figure out a way to put that on there like that. As you can see, this pot, same thing, too small. I really like the control on this stove. It was very smooth and there is no way to really adjust that. It's either open or it's closed. If we were to do this, maybe that's the way it was designed. Huh. So that sits on there. So that sits on there. And yep, that sits on there. And I don't see anything that would affect lighting these. Right, let's make sure it actually turns on. We have gas. It lit no problem, and that was on really low. So maybe the original design was, for a smaller pot, you'd turn the standoffs in, and for packing. And then when you have a bigger pot, you open them out, and you have a wider base to put a bigger pot on. My concerns seem to be alleviated right now. Did you like that word? Boil some water. So there we have 300 milliliters of water in there. I'm gonna say that's about halfway. Don't know about you, but I always boil with a lid on. And let's start timing. We've got small bubbles already. And there we go. We've got a good solid rolling boil. Let's see if you can see that. And that took just over two and a half minutes. Not bad considering I just have it set at about halfway on the heat. So that works. I was way less than halfway on that. So this has obviously got some power. Not bad at all. Can't complain about that. So it's got a lot of power. Do I need all that power? Probably not. I'm probably never going to use it on full power. I'm trying to avoid that because I'm trying to save myself gas. The Bulin Ultralight Windproof Camping Gas Stove.
something different and let's see if it'll work for what I want it for. Don't forget, like, share, subscribe. You know the story. Pretty sure I'll be back with something else. Always looking to improve on what I've got. That's my excuse and I'm sticking to it. <laughs> Just saying. Thanks for watching. Bye.